If you need to be talked out of the trailer, you could just put up an REI alcove like this, and you can put a nice tent next to it. And for less than a couple of hundred dollars, you can have a wonderful wilderness. There's a pit toilet over there with a solar fan, uh, keeping the air fresh in there. Uh, and there's a nice pond across the way. And you can just enjoy this without uh, much expense. In my case, I went for the trailer. It's a different level of comfort. I have a thick mattress. Uh, the rest of this video concentrates on the trailer, but I did want to say before I got this trailer, I did use the alcove. I did use a nice tent. I still have those. I still use those. There's nothing preventing you from getting outdoors. You don't need the trailer to get outdoors. But if you decide on a trailer and you want something similar, I'll just go through some of the uh, features that I enjoy. I'm not bragging or anything. I just am excited about it. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's no better or no worse than any other modes of travel. It's just different. just wanted to show the back of the trailer. I never have time to do this, so today's a good day. All the windows in the trailer are glass. Uh, this one is windshield type glass, automotive. I etched in the serial number of the trailer to uh, keep honest people honest. Uh, one of the things that I wasn't sure about when I got it, uh, Vistabule offers a number of different configurations on the kitchen. This trailer I picked up in January of 2015. And this is the design they were using then. Uh, since then they've changed things. They have a in-counter stove. This chops off about here. You don't have this drawer here and there's more space. So they're always changing. There's always uh, new things coming. Um, but I really wasn't sure how I was going to use the space. So what really suited me was to have wide open space. And down in here I can put the cooler, I can put storage, I can put uh, however I want to do it. The other side, it's just wide open space. Also, the sliders can come out if I wanted to put something really large in there. Uh, um, this side has a slide out drawer, which I keep all the pots and pans in, and some thin cutting boards, wash tub. Uh, the stove on this model is a slide out stove, which I like. Um, it has wind wings, windshields, which uh, make it a little easier to cook. I also have the burnt wings, which go on the sides for rain. Uh, when it's raining, if the wind is blowing at all, it brings rain at an angle, which could enter the trailer. So this open design fits me really well. I can just show what I want. If I want to put the cooler, if the cooler is really loaded up and it's heavy, um, I haven't weighed it yet, but if it is heavy, I think it rides a little better lower down, so I can just put it in the bottom. But normally, I have the cooler, you know, on the side of the table, and I put in my storage crates, put in my garden hose, some other things in here. I've got some plumbing down here, which gives me water. I have a nine gallon fresh water tank, and I think it's a six gallon gray water tank on this model. I currently have a hose hooked up draining the gray water. Uh, I think the new models come with a nine gallon gray water tank. I'm not, you know, things are changing all the time. So uh, that is the kitchen area, along with the sink and uh, the other things I've shown before. I'm marring the wilderness here with uh, some sounds wired into the trailer, speakers wired together, and uh, you know if a neighbor complains I'll turn it down. Okay, so here is the, uh, the burnt wing, snapped in the, snapped in the top, comes down, comes around, as it comes down it overlaps, so rain coming down, you know nothing's perfect but this is pretty good. Uh, the rain will drain off and sluice down the side. External snap here, all stainless, high quality. Uh, comes down and it just clips on the bottom. You know, this is not meant for a tornado or a hurricane, but it, uh, it certainly is good in a rainstorm. And it uh, does provide a nice enclosed area. It's not meant to be a rain shelter, but Combine that with the alcove, and it is totally water uh, watertight. 
Uh, we've cooked in raging rainstorms and never had a problem. Uh, the alcove is a, <laughs> a good, a good add-on to the trailer. So there you go. Okay, over here I have slide-down stabilizer legs. Um, these do make a difference. Not so much when I'm in the trailer when I move around. It does, you know, the suspension moves a little bit. Not so bad. I don't mind that. It's when I have a cup on a counter with liquid in it. Uh, these help stabilize the trailer so when someone's moving around, you don't notice the trailer's moving. But uh, liquids do notice it, and this helps stabilize that. So very lightweight, very easy to use. They just flip down. Solar connector. I have a controller inside that I put in, and it goes straight to the 55 amp hour battery. Here's the AC hookup. This is the uh, beautiful mag wheels that come on the trailer. Uh, my particular trailer has the optional hub cap. This goes over the hub. The hub looks okay without it, um, but you see the, uh, the actual hub itself. Um, and this is a little bit more attractive to me. And uh, it just slides right in. You take the wheel off, you slide in the cab, this, this metal cap, and uh, you have a nice cover on it. This also, this centerpiece pops out. You can pry it out, and that exposes the, uh, the hub. Um, and on the hub, the, these are Dexter hubs, uh, Dexter axles, very nice. Um, I would have picked that if I, you know, if I had a choice and I got it, but I didn't even pick it. So, uh, the, the Dexter Easy Lube, I think it's called, has a rubber disc in the center. You pop that out, and there's a, a nipple there, a grease gun nipple, a zerk. And you take your grease gun, put it on that, and you spin the wheel, jack it up, spin the wheel, and pump in grease, and it will flow out. You'll see it start to come out, and you flush the bearing. It, uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm not describing it well, but it's a pretty good system. You can look it up. Uh... I also got the electric brakes. I think they're six or seven inch electric brakes. The trailer weighs about 11 or 1200 pounds. When I'm on the road, it's probably like 15 with a full load of water, 1500. So, uh, I, you know, the car can handle that, but I just thought I'd take some stress off the car and get the electric brakes. This is the, uh, the uh, brake controller. I had it installed in the car. It's uh, not very big. Here's my hand. It can fit in the palm of my hand. Uh, it is um, about the size of a large iPhone. It uh, has... A, the controller applies the pressure to the brakes. This one uh, feels the momentum of the car and it applies more pressure. The more you decelerate the car, the more pressure it applies to the brakes. It's automatic. Um, it has a... Initial settings, so you set the initial brake pressure you want. You, you just calibrate it, a few knobs you turn. Uh, and there's also a boost setting, so you can boost the braking power. So if the trailer load changes, if you have it heavily loaded, you can uh, uh, make a few quick adjustments. Uh, again, the company is Tecumseh. I called them. They were very helpful. I was going to go for a much more expensive model, thinking more is better. But they said, no, for what you're doing, you don't need any of the features on a bigger model. Just get this small, basic one. It's simple. I got it. It works. I'm happy. A uh, word about lighting. We have these exterior lights. Um, when I purchased the trailer, this came with a uh, incandescent bulb, and I measured the draw with an uh, with a uh, meter. Uh, it was drawing 1.2 amps. I switched it with an LED replacement bulb, and the LED replacement bulb was about 20% brighter, and it used 0.25 amps so it used 150 energy and uh, put out more light so uh, <laughs> it was a good investment I think it was ten dollars for two of them easy to change bayonet plugs okay this is a uh, interior LED light quite a few LEDs here it's uh, very bright uh, there you go okay so uh, this provides uh, really bright lighting for as if you were at home and you had a room light on it was lit up the whole room these are spotlights uh, they're really, they're adjustable, and they pivot all over the place. You can even name it the ceiling if you want, if you want the ceiling washers. So um, they draw hardly any any energy, 0.09 amps, which, you know, <laughs> that's nothing. Uh, these draw 300, I think, or 350 milliamps. Uh, the outside light, I think it draws 250. Um, the lights in the galley, I think they draw 250 each. There's two of them. Uh, not much uh, power draw. The uh, the battery does fine with all this, and uh, I've never had a problem. 
uh, with running out of electricity. Uh, I'm gonna I plan on running the here's the pass through. I plan on running the fan all night, maybe tonight or next trip, and just seeing how much that draws. So the pass through, very handy, uh, has screens that slide open, and you can you know hey pour me a cold one or just uh, pass things through or just ventilation. Very handy. Uh, I velcroed voltage meters all over so I can just plug them in no matter where I am to see how much juice I'm drawing and how we're doing on the battery. It's never been a problem. Uh, all in all, pretty civilized camping. Okay, this is where the water comes in. Over here you have a place to pour in water. The water that goes in here goes into the tank. They have two hoses in the back. I'll show you those. I also have a funnel that goes on here. So if I'm filling with a bucket, I can just uh, pour the water in there and it feeds right into the uh, system just to make it a little bit easier for me. And the other side, let me close this off. The other side is uh, for a hose hookup. If you have city water, you just hook your hose up here, uh, flip the switch in the back, and it will uh, put that water through to the sink and you don't have to fill with tank. I have a long, about 25 foot garden, you know, water, you know, food quality water hose that I can hook up to the side of the trailer to, uh, if I'm not using the tank, I mean a campground has water. This campground does not have water or electricity. Um, here's a shorter one, and I use that shorter one, I put a water filter in the middle. It's a uh, Camco charcoal filter, it must be about a foot long. Makes that water taste great. I carry a little brush and dustpan for neatness. You know, you can get dust and dirt around when you're camping. Uh, sink. Turn on the turn on the electricity for the sink. It's one gallon per minute flow. Sprayer. So a word about water. Gallon a minute, nine gallon tank. You know you want to use uh, your head when you use water. If you're one of those wasteful water people, you'll run out of water quickly. I've had no problem. I'll put things in the sink, or I'll use a collapsible wash tub in the sink. I'll soap everything up, and then just uh, spray it down and rinse it, so I can use, you know, a lot less water. Works out good. I picked up a lot of these silicone rubber spoon holders. I use them for sponge holders. I use them for spoons, utensils. We use them when we set a table at a grungy campground. We can put our silverware on here. We can serve hors d'oeuvres on these. Uh, we can, they just, I got a million of them and they're really great. You can use them as a pot holder. I mean, they're good for up to 700 degrees, I think. I also, uh, silicone trivets. I got these on eBay. They're good as a, uh, well, yeah, they're good as a pot holder. Um, they're good as a jar opener. You can use them as a trivet for things on. Uh, I have a whole bunch of them. I use them a lot. But best of all, they're useful as a cup coaster. The waffle pattern, if you spill, have a minor spill, it won't go anywhere. The waffle pattern will hold it. Uh, so for these things are really cheap. They last forever. And uh, I love them. Uh, I find I get a lot of use out of these things. I got these at the container store. They call them cloth baskets, I think. And you just, it's a woven fabric. It's, uh, it's not cotton, it might be polyester, but it turns into a big box. Or you can fold it down and make it pretty much any size you want or reinforce it. Uh, in the kitchen, we can put sugar packets, uh, anything you want to organize. I've got two of them in a trailer, three of them in a trailer. One for me, one for Valeria. And uh, we use these at night. We go to bed, put a lot of things, you know, put our pocket things in there so we know where to locate it, flashlights and stuff. So there's, I have a couple of them, and they, uh, they're, they're really friendly. There's just something nice about them in the trailer. Okay, these are silicone wine glasses. They won't break. Bounceable. I suppose you could put a candle in them if you wanted a votive uh, like uh, experience. Uh, 
A little touch of elegance, you know. Just about anything you could want is available today. Uh, this is, so I can do it with one hand. This is a, I'm having trouble here, okay. Two-handed operation. A foldable hanger. So if it's really rainy and crappy and stuff is wet, I don't want to bring it in a trailer. I can just uh, bring it and hang it up under the alcove and let it drip dry. And, uh, you know, I normally wouldn't think about bringing hangers, but I just couldn't pass it up. Let me fold this up. Again, you know, you scour eBay and you'll find stuff that you never knew you needed. Uh, probably too much of it. So we carry a lot of dish towels, um, garbage bags, coat hangers. Um, these are the Burt Wings. They go on the sides of the kitchen. 12 volt DC power source. I can plug this into any one of the uh, DC outlets and run it out about 10 feet. Uh, I have two of those, so I can reach out pretty far. I can run my radio, you know, uh, inverter. I can do all sorts of things with it. I do have a small inverter. They're not very efficient, but I do have one, and it uh, will convert AC, DC to AC, uh, you know, in a pinch if you need it. Okay, so this is inside with the table up, the office table, and the, uh, the side tables. These, of course, flip up and down. I'm going to leave them up now. I'm running low on battery with this camera, which I have a 12-volt battery charger for the camera. And I'm going to lift up the the shade. Uh, so it's a nice comfortable area to spend some time and enjoy the view. Here's the Velcro uh, porthole cover Velcroed on. And then it's deployable up here. I can take it off and just a uh, piece of Velcro here. Put it uh, right back. A quick look at the cabinets. When the pass-through is open, it closes off the cabinets. If I open up the pass-through, there's my Tivoli audio radio. Shifts around a little during the driving, but it's not a problem. I have these storage baskets, uh, organized stuff so it doesn't get lost in here. Down below, some bedding. You know, you could put shelves in here if you wanted. Uh, I like the open space. Uh, I like to do what I want with that space when I need to. I never know what I'm going to be doing, short trip or long trip. So, uh, and here are the AC outlets that were covered before. Let me slide this over. Uh, there's two on the right side and two on the left side. And here, I have my sleeping bag in here. It's a pretty big space. Um, uh, it's a large space. Uh, again, I like flexibility. You can put shelves in, I assume, if you're one of those organizers. Here's the other side, left side. Uh, so again, a nice big space. And in here is an electric closet, utility closet. I have a battery, 55 amp hour battery, a six amp charger, which is great for this. It's right about one-tenth of the battery capacity, which is what you want. Uh, AC quad uh, fuses. I have, uh, I don't know if you can see the solar controllers, that little gray box uh, right there. It's uh, doing a great job. Um, that's it for the cabinetry. Let me close this back up. Um, as I said, I, I just like all the uh, space options I have. Okay, here's the evening view. It's after sunset. These are the two spotlights. They provide plenty of reading light. Uh, whatever you want to do with them, they're pretty good. Um, this is the bright interior light. One of these is enough. Two of them is more than enough. It's uh, indoor house lighting brightness. 
Um, I've got the stereo going. Turn these out a little quieter in here. And I can flip on the outside light if I want to have a look outside. So it's uh, pretty roomy for one, and it's not too bad for two. It's uh, got a lot of space. Some storage cabinets. Again, they offer cabinets that swing in, which wouldn't be a problem. A lot of trailers use that. Um, but I went for the sliding doors. To me, they make a little more sense. I have the pass-throughs. Fabric baskets. They prevent anything from getting lost in the trailer. You just throw all your stuff in these fabric baskets, and you're good to go. Keep a headlamp for outside runs. Fan. The window. It's a clear night. I'm going to do stargazing, and uh, if I see something good, I'll go outside, because the glass is tinted, but it's not real dark. So the front window serves as a view-forward window, but it's a really usable skylight. Some of the trailers I looked at had little slits, and they were smoked, smoked color. I mean, and they claim that they're skylights for stargazing, and you're not going to see anything. I can see quite a bit with this one. It's pretty functional. So this is my view. I'm camped across, looking directly at this pond. A lot of big turtles here. Uh, uh, Canada goose, some other things. Uh, good bird activity. The trailer is back here. So there's not much between me and the pond. There we go. Here's the trailer. It's totally quiet. There is a uh, solar-powered outhouse here and a nice bench for me to sit on. Very good birding activity here. Red-shouldered hawk, uh, uh, turkey vultures, two pileated woodpeckers came by, pine warblers, uh, chipping sparrows. Uh, there's a long list of birds I've been writing down that I've seen here. So. Uh, so this is what I like. Uh, I don't really care that I don't have a restaurant in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the lobby of the hotel. One subject that comes up a lot is the finances of the trailer. Like, you know, why did I go this route? Um, I could have gotten a larger trailer with a bedroom, a shower, a kitchen, a living room, a dining room, and a lot of other things, um, a bathroom. I didn't want to drive around my bathroom with me. Uh, I come from minimal camping, and I wanted simplicity. I don't want a headache of taking care of things. This has a propane tank. It has uh, a water tank, electric pump, some electricity. It's pretty minimal. I can, you know, there's not much to maintain on this, but you don't get much, right? You, you just get portability, a comfortable room, a nice uh, wood furnished room, which is pretty dang nice to me. Uh, I love it. Uh, windows. I got a great, the best view in the world. So um, I could have, my friends pointed out, I could have stayed, and I do stay at motels and hotels for 100 bucks a night or more. I could stay at a Motel 6 for 60 bucks a night, and I get the consistency of sheetrock, rumbling air conditioning, uh, artificial carpeting. My carpeting here is a real lawn. Uh, I get. Um, a wonderful view of the parking lot. Uh, often it overlooks a highway. Uh, so here's my view, you know. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I paid 20 bucks, $24 for this campsite a day. And uh, I'm the only one here. Everybody's over on the other side where there's a lake and they're all huddled around the lake. It's jam-packed. Uh, I have a nice pond across the way here. And uh, it works for me. So I calculate it will take me at $100 a night uh, it take me 200 nights to pay for this and the junk that's in it. Uh, I put in, this will probably be my 34th night in here. And uh, it's adding up. I'm still working. And I don't get to camp nearly as much as I want to. I'll probably do 100 nights a year or more. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to do a lot when I retire. So I think the finances are going to work out fine after a certain point. It, uh, the return on investment, dare I use that phrase when I'm camping, should be pretty good. And uh, I, I like it. I can just get up and go and do what I want to do. Um, the, you know, we're in 
Assateague Island. I'll be going back there again in July. Uh, we're right on the beach. <laughs> I mean, your hotel, you may look out at the beach, but I'm on the beach. <laughs> uh, when we go to Bar Harbor in uh, June or July, I'll be right on the water again. And uh, I don't drive around my bathroom. I use the campground bathroom. Uh, somebody else cleans it for me and provides paper goods. Uh, I, uh, I don't have a lot of headache. Yes, I have to get up and go there. In the middle of the night, you know, I've seen a luna moth, uh, bats, you know, all sorts of night creatures that I enjoy seeing. Uh, this is why I'm here. I want to hear owls at night. I want to see birds during the day. And uh, this just suits me. So everybody's finances are their own. If I didn't have this, I might just have the alcove in a tent. I might just be camping here. And I'd be pretty comfortable there too. So you don't have to have a trailer like this. I wanted it. I got it. And I'm happy with it. If it fits into your plans, uh, that's good. If it doesn't, you have lots of other options to enjoy things. So uh, work it out. See what works for you. It's morning. It rained a lot last night. Everything's drying out now. The quiet. It's gotten sunny. Um, a few words about electricity. Um, down here, I have a DC connect, which is connected to the solar panel on top, the black one, and an AC cap here. You plug this into an extension cord in a campground, and it powers the trailer with uh, AC power. The AC power, there's uh, two AC outlets in the uh, tongue box, two on each side. So there's four there. There's two AC outlets uh, on each side behind the couch when the bed is down. Um, you can see those. Uh, so that's four there. That's eight. I have uh, two on the pass-through, two in the kitchen, and four in the electrical outlet power area, the, the, the uh, utility compartment. So <laughs> you're never a few inches away from an AC outlet on this uh, trailer. Um, there's a couple of primary power considerations. You could you have uh, sources. There's the grid power AC, which I can plug into. I have the solar panel, which is hooked up. I had to deploy the solar panel retention system, which is these high-tech suction cups. They just stop it from blowing around. It's very thin. Um, I also have uh, when the trailer is hooked to a car. That will also charge the uh, 55 amp hour battery in the trailer. So um, I have multiple power options. Uh, the 55 amp hour battery seems to be enough for me. I have yet to run out of electricity. Um, there you go. Tables. Uh, I like removable tables. Uh, I don't. I had an option to get tables on the side. And I purchased it. I don't use it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Um, I have, for me, my choice is to use a freestanding table. Um, I can move that around. I can use it for a lot of different things. I can sit it as a dinner table. I can do it for food prep over here. Um, we have these small end table type tables, which we can eat off of if we choose to. Uh, and I, I can just put them all over. Um, I can move them where I want them. You know, there's a picnic table here. I'm not even using it. But uh, I, I thought a fixed table wouldn't be a good match for me. Uh, I wanted something that I could deploy in a lot of different ways. So you're, you know, you're free to make your own choices. This is Tillman's Ravine in Stoke State Forest in New Jersey. It is an old growth forest or area um, the story is that the, uh, the walls of the ravine were too steep for the loggers to get in there at the time they were logging this area. So they left these trees behind. There's these enormous 300-foot pines, 200-foot pines. They're, they're really wonderful. And uh, you go outside this immediate area of the ravine, and the trees have a trunk diameter of less than a foot. But in this area, they're three and four foot diameter trunks. I'm guessing they're 200, 250 feet high. They're really spectacular. So uh, thank goodness they didn't get in here and make these into paper plates.